If you're looking for a place to buy or sell your FIFA 23 Ultimate Team coins, check out u4gm.com as a reliable place to do so and use code ELITE, E-L-Y-Y-T, for 5% off at checkout. EA have actually fixed something within FIFA Ultimate Team, something that we have asked for, we have complained about, but we didn't need to beg them for this. It's a huge change, and I actually applaud EA for it. I'll get into that in a second. But we've also got a new promo in FIFA 23 Ultimate Team, the Showdown promo, if you even want to call it a promo, because it barely is. It seems to be a break in between all the promos that we've had so far this year and the upcoming FUT birthday promo. Now, here's the deal. Is FUT birthday going to be the next promo? That's not confirmed. In fact, I don't think it is going to be. I think it'll be the promo after the next promo. But let's not get too ahead of ourselves, guys. We've still got a lot of coins to make with the new road to the final cards that dropped last week. So we're going to give an update on those investments. I'm going to show you guys exactly what cards to buy right now. And if you guys do enjoy, do not forget to drop a like on the uh, video and subscribe to the channel. So let's go ahead and hop into it. First off, we have the big change. The thing that EA have gone out and fixed themselves, it is regarding player picks. Player picks in FIFA 23 Ultimate Team, FIFA 22, FIFA 21, ever since they were introduced, have always gone to your unassigned, and that meant that while they were in your unassigned, you could not do anything in your store at all. You couldn't open packs, you couldn't do anything. Now, you can actually store these player picks in the store. So they're not going to go to your unassigned. You'll be able to just let them sit in your store. So if you want to save player picks and packs, they're all going to be right here. And that way you guys can save them for like foot birthday or whatever promo you want. Now I'm going to open my one of 285 plus rare gold players pack because I want to get ourselves more high rated because I only got like 36 hours left to complete Mbappe. And let me tell you what, I have never regretted doing an SBC as much as I regret doing this Mbappe squad building challenge. What an absolute mistake. The card is not good enough for how much fodder it requires. I am like probably 70% done with it, but Jesus Christ, it is taking forever. Now we do get Antony as a reward, which is hardly SBC fodder. This card isn't even that bad. Packing Anthony segments us very well into talking about the rivalry re-release during this showdown promo, which gives us these 20 cards, including some big boys like Benzema's Winter Wild card. When that card came out, we made hundreds of thousands of coins. It was one of the more expensive cards that we had seen so far this year. Erling Haaland's ones to watch, which I have as inform, so I don't really want to pack them unless it's tradable. But all of these cards have gone down in price since release. And to be honest, a lot of these cards aren't even that great to begin with. I mean, I'm looking at Luis Alberto there in the middle, how did an 86 rated inform with 59 pace get into this promo? I have no idea. I'm not sure too many people are buzzing about that one, EA, or why you just wanted to even litter our packs with those kinds of cards. But they have thrown some of these cards in here just to make sure that we've got enough special cards to where the community doesn't complain too much, but we're still going to complain. All right. And even in the squad building challenges that they have dropped for the showdown, we can see here that Sabios and Molina have come out. And although Molina, not terrible, the card uh, is a right mid or a right back or a right wing back. And it's not got the worst stats. It is only three star three starts, not beyond anything we've seen so far. And so once they play that match, Real Madrid versus Atletico Madrid, Real Madrid are heavy favorites going into that match. One of them will get a big upgrade in the showdown but generally nobody is liking these squad building challenges and if you take a look on the SBC um, tab of Futbin, people are voting on these SBCs and you can see Sabios got 31% upvotes 69% downvotes and then Molina got 22% upvotes 78% downvotes. So people are not liking these squad building challenges. They do not think they are worth it. And to be honest, I kind of agree with the community on this one. Um, you're looking at 160,000 coins and 120,000 coins um, to build these. And with all of the other SBCs that are out right now, like the 85 plus player pick um, and all the player picks and, and 83 times 10 packs that we've had, 
there's not a lot of fodder in people's clubs right now. So you're having to go out and build these from scratch or use every last bit of fodder and, and gold rares in your club to do upgrade packs to get these SBCs. And they're not spectacular. You know, if you're going to make an entire promo around showdown SBCs and objectives, you would think that they would go a little bit more above and beyond for them, but they haven't. And so that's what we're looking at for content. But on the upside, we are looking at great profit from most of our investments that we've made in the last two videos. So if you guys haven't been keeping up with the channel, well, I want to say welcome back. And I also want to go ahead and show you guys which investments maybe you can already sell. And some of these that are looking very, very good as we get out of packs for them. So let's scroll across to the second page. We'll start with Frimpong because this is the card that we bought first. So Frimpong we bought for 26000 25000 um, somewhere around in that area. Uh, a lot of you guys sent me pictures on Twitter, uh, you know, flexing your guys' profits. I love it. I absolutely love when you guys uh, send me your uh, pictures of profit that has, has worked out. But the reason that Frimpong has worked so well was because of the Diaby SBC. And we were kind of in a little bit of a lucky situation where Bayer Leverkusen did go through Bayer Leverkusen moved on to the next round. And so Diaby got upgraded and a lot more people went out and completed that squad building challenge. And to link it, they went out and bought players that were from Bayer Leverkusen. So Florian Verts went up. That was another investment that I said to go buy was Florian Verts. Frimpong, of course, is up to 40K. Um, Verts, I think, is extinct. And I'll tell you what. I did say that there was an investment. This Florian Verts is up to 60,000 coins plus. He was at like 40K when we shouted him out. An absolutely great investment. And then I'll tell you what, there is one investment that I told you guys was a little bit too risky. A card that I didn't think was going to work out very well uh, unless Diaby was a great SBC, which it did end up being. But I thought this was risky and I told you guys that. So I probably hindered a lot of you from buying this card, but it worked out as well. All right. This card went from 19K all the way up to 30,000 coins. So if you bought any cards from Bayer, uh, Bayer Leverkusen, you ended up making great great coin. So hopefully you guys got in on that Frimpong and on that Florian Verts. So big profit there. And going out of packs for informs has been the most consistent way to make coins for me this entire year. I buy inform cards that are in the meta. Maybe we'll get a good compliment link in the near future and I'll buy them on Sunday night or maybe even Saturday night when people are opening their weekend league rewards before people are thinking about out of pack investments. That's normally when they get their cheap cheapest. You can get them towards the end of the weekend for a very good premium price. And you just wait till they go out of packs and you wait only a few days. Sometimes by the time it's Wednesday or Thursday, a lot of times they are up in price a ton. Sometimes you have to wait a week, but it's definitely worth it. Now for road to the final card, speaking of cards that are out of packs, they finally went out of packs. Seemed like that week lasted forever with so many games, so much happening all at once. Prices rising, prices dropping, panic selling, panic buying. It seems to have finally settled down and prices are slowly going up. Now for Fofana, 210,000 coins is what we ended up buying those cards for. And Fofana is already rising. His game is not until the midweek next week. And as you guys can see, He's up to nearly 250,000 coins, 241 right now, but only three less than 248. And he's rising actually a lot quicker than some of the others. And I think that he's going to continue to rise until their game against Dortmund this week. Now, Daniel Malen, I bought a little bit too early. He got down as low as 86K. I bought early at 92. I still think I'll be fine. I'll make some profit. His card is on the way up as well. Not nearly as quickly as Fofana, but he is back up to 90,000 coins now. So we're looking good. He dropped down to the mid 80s. He's back up to 90. And then we've got upgrades. Upgrades for Conference League, upgrades for Europa League because they get upgrades for qualifying for the round of 16. And I'll tell you what, this Atal wasn't a very big risk at all because he was already qualified for the round of 16. His card was going to get upgraded no matter what. And there was a little bit of a scare because they didn't get upgraded immediately, but then EA eventually did. And we have seen a huge rise in price on him and on Miranda and on Martinelli and all of the cards that ended up qualifying for the round of 16, especially when they were already qualified. So let's go ahead and take a look at 
Atal, and we'll take a look at Miranda, who had one of the best returns on investment. What is Futbin doing right now? What is this? Futbin, get your stuff together. Is it doing it on every tab? Futbin's broken right now. Let's just go ahead and search the player and move on. Uh, Miranda, this card went from 86 to 88 rated, and he is now 48,000 coins. But if we take a look at the hourly graph, we can see that this card over the course of the last 24 hours has been on an absolute roller coaster. The card was 39K after the investors got in. You can see when the best time to buy was, just pretty much throughout the last couple of days, I guess. Um, but... If you take a look at when the investors really got in, he went from 35 to 39,000 coins. And then they didn't get upgraded. And so they crashed because people thought EA is not going to upgrade them for qualifying for the round of 16. I don't know why, but they didn't. And then you can see when they actually finally got upgraded. He went from 26K at his lowest point all the way to 60,000 coins. He actually peaked at 60K before he rebounded a little bit, but still insane amount of profit. Even if you bought at the worst time and you sold at the best, uh, uh, sold at the worst time, you bought at the worst time, sold at the worst time, you're still making about 8K profit per card, which is insane because if you bought at the right time and sold at the right time, you could have easily made 60% uh, more coins. So going from, uh, I guess not 60%, but from 35K to 60K, you would have made about 80% more in terms of your coins. So almost doubling your coins there. Very, very, very insane profit on Miranda. Um, and his card is back down to 47K. So my take here is he is going to hit a bottom. He's going to slow down. So he's dropping quickly right now. He went from 60, he's down to 48. There's going to be a point where the people stop selling their investments. There's going to be another opportunity to get in on this. But one thing you have to consider here is that they do play Manchester United in the next round and that starts on march 6 i believe so they're not favorites going into that but it's a great card nonetheless so over the next day or so next two days he'll probably be sitting around this price maybe drop another couple thousand coins maybe rise two thousand coins not moving a ton but then he should slowly rise after that because you've got those investors who have already sold off and the card is very, very good. And if we've learned anything from Cap Davila's price, then I believe that this card could easily get back up to 60,000 coins. This card is 850K. And if we take a look at how he's moved over time, 400K, he's never stopped rising. Well, until Miranda came out as an upgraded card because if you compare the two, 90 pace, 82 dribble, 78 shooting, 87 defense, 82 physicality, and 83 passing, and that's 850,000 coins, to this card with about the same pace, the same dribbling, better defense, uh, decent physicality, just less shooting, 47K. There's a lot of people who are going to prefer to go with Miranda there, and I think there's definitely some demand in that position for La Liga based on that Captavilla price. So we're looking at a good card, whether it stays 88 rated or it gets upgraded. Then we're looking at Atal. This card here, um, Nice are a good team. He's up to 220,000 coins. I think that they're more likely to go through to the next round than uh, Real Batisar. But anything can happen in these tournaments, of course. But as you guys can see, he got down to less than 200K. He's up to 220 now after this first upgrade. And he might not stop there. 93 pace, all stats, 82 and above. And he's already got four star, five star, which means that if you get to that point where there is a weak foot upgrade, they're most likely going to do the exact same thing they did during Path to Glory. Well, they'll just give them another inform boost. This card, if OGC Nice go very far in the Conference League, could be the best right back in the game. And you're looking at 218,000 coins right now. I want to come back to this card in a, you know, a month from now, and we'll see what this price is because I would be pretty surprised if it's less than 218,000 coins. But if they do lose immediately in the next round, he definitely will be. So it could go either way. There's a big risk. Then we've got Gabriel Martinelli, 900,000 coins now. Same concept as Miranda. Arsenal, obviously favorites to go through in the next round. They're favorites maybe to win the entire tournament. Manchester United, obviously, you know, very, very capable of doing it. Sevilla can never count them out in Europa League, but Arsenal in great form this year. We know how good they are. And this card went from 800K to 900K. But if we take a look at the hourly graph, very, very similar thing 
to what we saw with Miranda. The card dropped from 850 all the way to 780 when people were panic selling and then the panic buying began. He got up to 934,000 coins for an average of that hour. He's back down to nearly 900K. So he's getting back down there. Maybe let it settle over the next 24 hours. Monitor that price. Could be a good high um rated investment. Then we're looking at Barella, who is back up to 380. I think that card's going to be well over 400k by the time Inter Milan play next. And that's when I'm going to sell. I'm not going to actually hold that card past when they play because you're risking them losing. You're risking these cards dropping a ton. We've seen it time and time again. You don't want to hold those cards through their match. We saw what happened to Roberto Firmino. We saw what happened to Bruno Gamera's during Path to Glory. If you guys enjoyed, don't forget to drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you are new. And the secret comment word of the day is going to be Atal, A-T-A-L. Go ahead and hide that somewhere in your comment, and I'll make sure to drop a heart on it. Appreciate you guys watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.